Hey guys, welcome back to Such Plants. My name is Ron, and today we are going to do a repotting of my Diffenbachia carina. So I got this plant as a gift from one of my friends on my birthday. And when I first got it, I'll show a picture. It was really, really nice. It had huge leaves. It had consistent variegation in every single leaf. But then day by day, all of the original leaves eventually fell off. And this plant normally has variegation that looks like this. This plant originally was left at work. It wasn't sitting under the grow light, so it wasn't getting as much light as it needs in order to promote all of this variegation. So as a result of that, after all of those original leaves fell off, it started pushing out these baby leaves without variegation. And as you can see, the stems, just like uh, the baby Monster Deliciosa that I just potted up in my last video, where the original stems started out healthy and thick, and then they came out very thin and flimsy looking as soon as they were devoid of any sufficient light. So now that it's springtime, uh, it's pushing out more and more leaves on a consistent schedule. Um, there's probably a new leaf every other week but if we look closely at this leaf here, the variegation, you can see that it's coming back. So I'm gonna pot it up into new soil. I think the soil that I first potted up in, it into was a little bit too chunky. And I've noticed that this plant likes its soil to be moist. And when it's dry, the leaves start to turn yellow and crisp up really fast. So to mitigate that, I am going to be using just basic potting soil with a little bit of extra perlite. And here I did end up adding orchid bark and that kind of made the soil too coarse. So I think with the new potting soil mixture, it's going to retain a lot more moisture for a longer period of time. So I will show you what it looks like when I remove it from the pot and we're going to check out the roots and see how it looks. There is also a ton of mosquito bits in here. This is an old, a very, very old yellow sticky trap with some mos mosquitoes, with some fungus gnats on it. Um, but it doesn't seem like it has new fungus gnats, so that's a very good sign. This one also does not have systemic granules in it, but it did at one point suffer a fungus gnat infestation. So I stopped watering it for a while, but I think all of the fungus gnats are gone. This one actually lives downstairs next to my fiddle leaf fig, next to a humidifier. So I think that's also one of the reasons why it's coming back to life. So let me go grab my green potting mat and let's see what we're gonna be working with. Okay, so here's the potting mat. The plant is also still in its nursery pot. So here it is. It does still feel a little bit moist, but with the new soil, I'm, I'm going to be watering it afterwards. So as you can see, there's a lot of mosquito bits in here, right? And like I said in my fungus gnat, video um there was mold growing on this every single time i watered it so i am not going to be putting mosquito bits back into this pot instead i am going to be using the bonite systemic granules so also as a little update on my fungus gnat problem i did find a couple of fungus gnats the other day but after that uh, I don't think I saw any. So I think we're doing really good. So we'll give it another 
couple of weeks or so until I can give my final verdict. But so far, looking so good. Also, when I first got the plant, um, it had a spider mite infestation, so that could have contributed to the falling of the beautiful leaves. But I don't see any webbing at the leaves anymore, so I think that infestation is gone, which is very good. So I'm gonna just tilt this carefully and see what the roots look like. It's been probably almost a whole year since I examined the roots. Okay, so here's a root system. It's mostly thin roots, but they look pretty healthy. They're all white. I don't see any black or mushy roots yet. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of, uh, I was gonna say fungus gnats. <laughs> there's quite a bit of um, orchid bark in here. So I'm gonna try to not use orchid bark in the new mixture. So I'm just gonna carefully tease the roots, loosen it up and try to get as much of the old soil out as possible. some root rot, but nothing too bad. So I'm just going to carefully pinch those off. But other than that, I think the root system looks pretty healthy. There's some of the dried roots up here that were probably not touching soil. So I'm just going to remove that as well. But yeah, that's what we have. Looks pretty good. Now let's toss the soil and then create our new mix. All right, so here I have the Dr. Q's Filthy Rich Gold Potting Soil that I talked about also in my last couple of videos. And then I'm adding some extra perlite, as I mentioned earlier. And then here we have some worm castings. So hopefully during the spring, it'll push out Bigger and bigger leaves, because that's what we want, right? And I know we all want to know, did I make enough? I'm gonna be potting it up back into the nursery pot because I still think it's a good size, which I did run through some hot soapy water. I'm gonna put a layer. All right, and then let's, whoa. Okay, let's see if she fits. That looks good. Tap her in like that. Make sure the soil gets all up in those holes. Oh my God, I made enough soil. I made like the perfect amount of soil, guys. This is like the first time that's ever happened. Oh no, I killed an offshoot. That's okay. All right, and you just press that in gently. Now she's ready for a drink. Ta da! I need more water. All right, so in my watering can, I'm gonna be adding Dr. Q's plant tonic, and hopefully, it prevents transplant shock. 
and promotes new growth. I talk about this a lot in my previous videos, and I think it's like literally a lifesaver for my plants, especially when transplanting and repotting plants. So I'm just gonna be adding maybe two, two drops in here, three, I think three is good. Give it a nice swish. Just turn it into an ASMR video. All right, now I put the nursery pot back into its decorative pot here, which is really gorgeous. It's nice and solid, hard. I really like how it looks. And then I'm gonna thoroughly water her in. Also, what I do like about this planter is that even if the plant leaks water underneath, it's not just going to pool down in the bottom because this is a porous material. So at the bottom, it will absorb whatever water is left and then it will evaporate out. So it's not as messy. There we go. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I hope that with springtime here, that it's gonna start pushing more and more of these variegated leaves. And hopefully with each leaf, comes out bigger and bigger. And I hope that it fills out pretty soon because it's a really beautiful plant. Again, this is the Diffenbachia carina. I'm gonna show you where her final home is because in one of my previous videos, I did talk about how uh, my neighbor blocks all the sun, but in the summertime, there is a sliver of direct sunlight. So I'm going to show you what that looks like because I think there is sunlight down there right now. But yeah, thank you guys again for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet already, plant scribe. All right, guys, see you guys in the next one. Bye! Can't reach from here, so...